In order for molecules to bend so that a reaction can occur, a certain activation energy must be absorbed by the molecules. Not only must new bonds form that might be energetically favorable, but old bonds must break as well. Activation energy provides a barrier that determines reaction rate. Let's quickly review the two things that affect reaction rate, concentration of the reactants and temperature. Why can't cells use heat to speed up reactions? Think about this for a moment. Well, increasing temperature would increase the rates of all reactions, but there's something else that we need to learn about today. Above a certain temperature, or even above or below a certain pH, enzymes, or proteins, which are the molecules that speed up all reactions, denature, which means they fall apart. Since all reactions in any living organism are mediated by proteins, like enzymes, then reactions simply cannot happen above or below a certain temperature or above or below a certain pH. What do enzymes lower that allow reactions to proceed? It is activation energy that enzymes lower. Now let's look at a chemical reaction. We're going to have two reactants, reactant AB and reactant CD, we're going to combine to produce products AC, BD, and some energy. Here's the graph of the reaction. We start at the certain energy that reactants have. Energy increases in the system until the energy amount reaches what's called the transition state. This is the point at which old bonds are breaking and new bonds are forming. At that point, the energy of the molecules drop quickly until they reach the product energy, and we now have the products AC, BD from our reactants AB and CD. This hump here is called the activation energy. It was the energy required for molecules to reach the transition state between reactants and products. And as I stated earlier, this is the barrier that determines reaction rate in a chemical reaction. Enzymes are catalysts in biological reactions that speed up reaction rate. Even some exothermic spontaneous reactions occur too slowly for living things to benefit from them. So an enzyme is a catalytic protein. Enzymes are specific to a given reactant. The reactant that an enzyme works on is called its substrate. The enzyme binds to the substrate, forming an enzyme-substrate complex. An enzyme can tell its substrate from its enantiomer, which is the same molecule in mirror form, usually, and this specificity allows biological organisms to produce only one functional enantiomer during chemical reactions, where the products have such isomers. The specificity of an enzyme occurs because the enzyme is a protein with a specific shape. The part of the enzyme that binds the substrate is called the active site. The active site responds to the binding of its substrate by shifting slightly, thereby moving the substrate into a beneficial position for reacting. Enzymes can convert thousands of reactants into products per second. In fact, specifically, Enzymes catalyze reaction rates, increasing them by 10 million times or more. There are four ways that an enzyme affects substrate to lower activation energy. Keep in mind, regardless of which way it, the enzyme is using, or if it's using more than one of these ways, it's still lowering activation energy. It can provide a template. It can stretch substrates, stressing their bonds. It provides an appropriate microenvironment. And enzymes temporarily bond the substrate. So here is what a graph would look like of our chemical reaction between A, B, and C, D if an enzyme was mediating it. The reactant energy would remain the same, the activation energy would be lower, and the product energy would be the same. 
It is the activation energy that is lowered by an enzyme. Here is a cartoon that demonstrates normal enzyme substrate binding. Here we see the substrate binding the enzyme where it will provide a template which is clearly drawn. It will provide the appropriate microenvironment, probably pH, which will catalyze the reaction. The enzyme will temporarily bond the substrate and then it will also stretch the substrate, stressing the current bonds and inducing the final bonds. Finally, the enzyme releases the product.